it is for all gathered, professed believers in Jesus Christ. Christians who are currently in open rebellion against God, who have no desire at this moment in their life to repent, should not take part in communion. Also, those who do not yet know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior should not take the bread and the juice, but should instead use this time to pray and seek the Lord and ask to be led uh, to a salvation moment with Jesus. For those of you that have your Bibles and you want to read uh, along with Scripture, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 23 to 29. Paul wrote, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. When the Apostle Paul wrote these words to the church in Corinth, he described the significance of communion with past, present, and future language, and every time we come to the Lord's table, we proclaim this threefold significance. We see the past significance because as Jesus instructed, we take the Lord's Supper in remembrance of Jesus' finished work of salvation through his life death and resurrection, the bread broken and the wine poured out serve as concrete, tangible reminders of Jesus' real physical life and sacrificial death, which occurred once for all in the past, and that we will study further in our apologetic series and look at the evidence for those things. We don't just say them. As Hebrews says, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The work of salvation is finished. Communion also has present significance. When Christians come together for the Lord's Supper, we are celebrating and joyfully proclaiming the new covenant and the redemption through Jesus' blood that is offered to all people. It proclaims the present power of the death of Christ and celebrates that we, who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And finally, the Lord's Supper looks forward to the future because Jesus is coming again. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As he gave his disciples the cup, he pointed them to his future return. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And the book of Revelation portrays this great feast for the marriage supper of the Lamb which was anticipated in the prediction of a messianic banquet in the book of Isaiah and the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus intentionally points his followers toward his future hope at the Last Supper. So when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we remember God's work of redemption in the past. We proclaim his grace in the present, and we look forward to to Jesus' return in the future. It's a joyful, thankful, hopeful celebration as we reflect on God's grace to us through his son Jesus, who is the greatest gift one could ever receive. So in response to these things, as we take communion this morning, let us be a grateful people. Go and get your Read out if you have not done so already. Come into the winter season, the cold season, get dry fingers, trying to work with these thin pieces of plastic. Challenge of the ages.
Clearly, I have dry fingers. Okay. Scripture says again, on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take a moment to be silent right now after you've had the bread and just be in prayer and just seek God. After they had eaten, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Again, just be still, just seek the Lord in prayer. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus. Thank you for the great love you have for your creation, for your people, Lord. Thank you that you are never going to leave us to our sinful fate. It was your plan from before you created anything that salvation would be freely available to all men. Lord, we're lost without you. We're so grateful that those here this morning have had the opportunity to, to meet your son, to learn of his life, his death, his resurrection, his great sacrifice. Lord, thank you that you draw us together as a believing people at your at your supper table. Lord, help us to not, not just pass by this moment this morning. It's just one more thing we've done at church. Lord, help, help our communion this morning, the celebration. Lord, help us to just stay with us through the coming week. Lord, help us to, to take this moment of remembrance throughout each of our days. Lord, we, we love you. We want to we want to be spending as much time as we can with you. We want to be in your presence. We want to know you better. We want to become more like our Savior, and we want to just share him with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. speechless.
down the stone long DNA chain to give you your name. That's why God made the world. From every nation, every tribe, the sparkle in every kid's eye. Rainbow around the moon, and all beauty turns my soul to you. Though that's why you made the world for love to blossom and grow down. Sunlight lands so softly on your face, speak so clearly of your mercy and grace. That's love is why you made the world. I ascribe greatness to I could just uh, before we uh, before we receive our benediction and, uh, and go in peace today, uh, if I could just have your attention just for a moment or two. Uh, there's a few things uh, kind of swirling around out there that uh, we want to be uh, want to call you to pray for. Uh, first of all, uh, is the election in two days. Um, I will, as you all know now, as I've talked to so many of you, I will I will not preach political affiliation. Uh, or preference to, to any ideology from the pulpit, I proclaim Christ uh, crucified and raised. Amen. Um, but the election is, so uh, we, are, we are a republic, we do have public elections, uh, the right to, uh, to vote to have these elections was paid for in blood. Um, I pray that, uh, that anyone who has the ability to vote uh, would exercise it, uh, vote your conscience, meet with the Lord in prayer. Um, and then uh, I'd like you to uh, also pray for the church finances. Um, I know it's uh, on, on many hearts here. Um, we are selling uh, the ministry house. And have, have we received uh, the money yet? No, no tomorrow, I think the board meets tomorrow. 
Okay, so the, uh, it, th that's it nearly completed uh, where we will have uh, the, the sale of the house funds uh, available to us in our, in our, uh, in our account. Uh, the property uh, it, you know, has not been built on yet. Uh, that sits and, and uh, people pray and ask questions about that as well. So I, first of all, I want you to all be aware that, that the church leadership is also is aware of these things as well. And when we meet, we discuss them and, and we pray about them. Um, and so you should as well do that. Um, and then the pandemic continues and, and it seems to be spiking right now. And there's talk that, you know, even though the year of this nonsense and, and this is a burden, friends, on so many levels to, to all of us. No one is exempt for this. If you think that you don't have some kind of, of depression over this, you're, you're, you're fooling yourself. The way humanity and the brain and everything is created, this is a massive interruption uh, in, in what we know to be the usual routines of life. Um, and we all bear some impression of that negatively. Uh, it affects people. Um, so be praying uh, for that. Um, so I, I, call, I call you to prayer today. I wrote this out. So uh, please just, uh, your church, we need to pray for wisdom uh, in handling our finances and our property. We are to honor the Lord with our resources. We are to be faithful and wise managers. As a church, we need to pray diligently, earnestly, often, and seek the Lord's will regarding these matters. We live in times that are more uncertain than usual. Um, this pandemic and all the challenges it presents corporately and individually is such a serious matter and that it's not going to be done for some time. And this election, this is a serious one. It is a battle of ideologies and there's no doubt that the church will be affected by the outcome one way or the other. This is a time for great faith. It is a time for prayer and patience and prudence. I have no doubt that if, if we are faithful, the Lord will guide us so that we are in accordance with his plans for this church, both financially regarding evangelism uh, and discipleship, and that if we seek the Lord, we will be positioned to ably and promptly respond to his direction. We need to pray for this election. We need to pray for the American people. We need to pray for peace. Don't, don't just pray for, we're not praying for one side or the other to win. We're praying for Christ to win, for there to be his peace on our country. We need to pray that love and grace will rise and that hatred and anger will cease. We need to pray for the healing of our land. We need to pray that regardless of the outcome, those who know Christ will remain steadfast in their faith and those that do not know Christ will turn to him for salvation. We need to pray that no Christian will hate another based on their vote because it is a confusing issue. You may view it as black and white, maybe to someone else they don't, and we need to give grace. We need to seek understanding. We need to pray that the kingdom of God will advance. To that end, we are having prayer on Zoom this Thursday at 7.15. We will send an invitation out to the church. If you have the time and the technology to join us, would you please, if you cannot join us, please set aside some time to pray earnestly. Uh, like those who are gathered during that hour will. And that hour is not the only time during our week, friends, that we are to be on our knees. We need to pray that our church here in Roxbury will bear faithful witness to our Lord and Savior Jesus, the one that God has highly exalted. And let this be your benediction. And given the name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let that be our closing prayer, our benediction this morning. Go in peace, friend, all God's children said. Amen. Amen.